How's it going, fish heads? Casting tips today, both for fixed pools and multi First of all, we're going to talk about how I started casting. Believe it or not, I started I started beach fishing in Greystones, just outside Dublin, I believe it's in Wicklow. But my first trip there was about 14, 15, and I saw the lads on the beach, and they all had 12 foot rods and multipliers. And of course, I went to the tackle shop, and that's what I bought, 12 foot rods and multipliers. Then I hit the beaches and I started casting with very little tuition from a friend. Pretty soon I was casting, back then, there was no magnetic brakes. There was centrifugal brakes, they're still around today. They work just as well, but then you had to use your thumb to regulate the line there as it went out. It wasn't very difficult, I got straight into it, fishing straight away, and I was a beginner. So despite what people say about multipliers, they're not as scary as you might think, once you know how to control them. The first thing you should know about them is when you get them out of the box, is get a real, if you're a beginner, especially if you're a beginner, is get one with magnetic brakes. And when you cast, for the, for the first while, never mess with the brakes until you're confident. So keep them on low, or slow, sorry. Until you feel that you can progress from that point. Now, if you use a fixed spool reel, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff at all. But of course, there's other advantages and disadvantages to both reels. Anyway, so what we've got here is a 14 and a half foot standard beach caster. We've got a Meg 525. We've got 40 pound bread. We've got a 100 pound leader. So to help us today, I have devised the Whittle Squid. That's what it is. Just like a Whittle ball, but for uh, casting instead. It does not go very far, so I don't have to spend the rest of the day retrieving it after I cast. Bit of fun anyway, so you can see it as well. So to begin with, first of all, when you, I think everybody knows the basics of, of, of casting. So a lot of people will start with the reel in this position here and they'll have their hand down there. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there is a problem with it. And they just stand like this and they cast straight towards the sea. And the only problem is, the rod's halfway through the arc already and you're missing out on a lot of power and you haven't managed to load the rod up. So to do this, to load the rod up, people will start ground casting. So they lay the lead out on the ground like this and they'll walk into it like this and they'll have their hands in such a fashion. I said, if you're fishing with a clip down rig, it can be a bit of a pain sometimes when the hooks come undone. So people use rotos, splash downs, that sort of thing. That's extra but expenses, I don't really use it. But there is a way around it, and that's an aerialized ground cast. And it's not as hard as you think. You just need to practice swinging the lead weight until you can predict what it's going to do and when it's going to do it. So first things you have to focus on is the reel. Is the reel, if it's a multiplier, are the brakes where they should be? Then is the, the line wrapped around the rod tip? And then after that, you want to make sure your feet are pointed in the right direction, right? This is just a basic stance. When I move into the cast, I'll turn my back and put my heel like this. But that's a preference thing only because I wear a lot of clothes. If you want to cast effectively, you want your hands as high up as you can get them. Obviously, you can't cast like this unless you're Big Danny. <laughs> I don't know how he manages that, but somehow he does. But for me and most other people, just a little bit above shoulder height. The left yes. arm is to be slightly bent, not a lot. And so that's your starting stance for casting of any type. Whether you're just walked onto the beach with a fixed pool, whatever, that's your first start casting stance. Something else you need when you're casting with a multiplier is a tone protector. Not everybody uses them, but they're a good idea. This is made from some rubber gloves. You can make them from inner tubes, from tires, old fishing gloves, whatever you can find, basically. Don't spend too much money on it. If you're using the fixed spool, you'll need a finger stall or a casting cannon. They also are called bionic fingers as well, some places. But you can find them on the internet, casting cannon. You strap them to your rod book, so that's for the fixed spools. Fixed spools can also be fished in this orientation as well, with the rod, with the reel down the butt like this. It's done for many different reasons. One of them is, so the rod, so the rod can load from tip to butt 
and store as much energy as it can in the, in the blank itself. It also um, acts like a counterweight to improve your own strength and also it kind of helps balance out the difference between the lead weight on the end. It makes for a more balanced feeling when you're casting and doesn't feel so choppy as it would if the, the reel was higher up the butt. If you move the reel up, the, road, the rod will load up quicker and it will put more stress on your body. So with these big, strong, stiff rods, it's best to cast with the reel down the butt like this. So one of the reasons I decided to make this casting video is the fact that in the on YouTube and everywhere else around these days, multipliers are getting some really bad press. <laughs> People say the most awful things about them. They're not that bad. They really are not. You just have to make sure to stop them just after they hit the water or just before. It's not hard, you can hear it in the reel. Just a couple of casts, you'll get it, no problem. Overruns, that's the brakes. If you're getting overruns first cast, check your brakes. It's human error, not the reel that's the problem here. So all you need to do is just check these few simple basics. The magnets, tip rings, and stop it just after or just before it hits the water. I, it will run over a tiny little bit, but you'll get that little bit extra distance. So that's it. In the beginning, if you want, you can stop it just before, when you can see during the daytime. In the nighttime, when you're casting with a multiplier, you can't see a damn thing. So what you're doing is you're listening to the reel. That might sound a bit difficult, but it will tell you everything you need to know. So I'm not actually going to cast, I'm just going to lay it out. You can see the point where I am going to hit it though. When the lead weight lifts, the rod tip drops. And that's the point where you hammer it. It's just a push pull, it's a straight cast. So, so to start with, you check to, you check to make sure you got the right drop which for most people is about half the, half the length of the rod. Then you check to make sure it's free, the tip ring. And then you move into the cast. Keep your arm nice and straight. Then let it down. And that's it. Now I'm gonna move into the aerialized cast. Now you Just the same as before. Now, this isn't that neat and it's not that untidy. So if you've got a few little humps and bumps in your line, don't worry too much about it. If it's all piled up on one side to, to the other, you're not bringing it in smoothly. You want to keep the line evenly going across, not in a zigzag, right beside each other, all the way across and all the way back. And just do that until it comes in. It takes a little bit of practice, but that's just multipliers. Okay, to begin with, when you fish with a leader, a lot of the, with mono and stuff, you'll have um, a great big knot which will cut your thumb. So you're going to need some type of thumb protector. And if you're uh, right-handed and you're fishing with the reel down the butt, you will be casting with your left hand. I know it seems more difficult, but it really isn't. It's not as daunting as you might think. A few casts and you'll have it down. It's no problem at all. Just spend the day on the beach with a set of feathers, just messing around. You might catch a few mackerel as well. So. Always put the leader, always put the leader over to one side of the spool, away from the side with your thumb, just to avoid injury. So the next cast I'm gonna show you is the aerialized easy cast. It is what it is. It's kind of somewhere between a ground cast and a pendulum cast, kind of. But you'll see what I mean. Right, so this is the aerialized easy cast. It's just like the other one, except the lead weight's gonna swing up here beside my head and then I move into the cast. Much so 
So that's that, that's how easy that is. It's just important to, in the beginning to remember not to hit things too hard until you feel good about what you're doing, until you gain the muscle memory that's necessary to do these type of things. Of course, you can't walk out of the shop and buy a multiplier and go pendulum casting. Not unless you're, I don't know who, maybe Danny was born that way, but the rest of us aren't. <laughs> So when I talk about laying the line, this is what I mean. Just simply like that, guide it with your thumb. Backwards and forwards like that, until the leader's on. It's a bit difficult with gloves on. And if you do it slowly, it's even more difficult, so I'll speed it up. So you get the idea there anyway. Woo! There you go. So now I'm going to walk you through the South African cast. It's one of my favourite casts because I, ca I fish a lot in cold regions. Pendulum casting with a lot of clothes on is very difficult. So the South African cast kind of cuts the corners off that if you want and you're almost there. It's very effective. So I'm just going to show you that one just to start with. Don't forget, check your magnets, check, check your tip ring. The South African cast is a great way to move into the pendulum cast because it allows you to transition between the pendulum or from a from a manerialized ground cast to the pendulum. And one of the things that puts people off is they're trying to hammer it straight out and you can't do it because you're not facing in the right direction. So what happens is your body locks up, your arms lock up and you end up doing a kind of pirouette instead of a instead of a cast. So in the beginning when you're doing a South African cast this most important thing is to remember, you're not moving your arms as so much as twisting the top half of your body. That's why your legs stay pointed at the sea and your body turns. So the first half of pendulum cast and South African cast is uh, turning your upper body until the point where you reach the push-pull and then you hammer it. And that's basically it. <laughs> 